So you want to dip your car. That's awesome. Dipping your car is a great inexpensive way to change your car's look. It can seem pretty daunting at first, but that's why I'm here. In this video, I'm going to show you my experience dipping my own car so that hopefully you can be inspired by this, learn from it, and apply some of it to your own project. This is a part 2 to my previous video where I went over the preparation, materials and tools, and how to plan your plastic dipping job. In this part, we're going to be masking and dipping the wheels and the car. So let's begin. So last time we left off, we were looking at my car right here, and it was in the garage. I had just stored it after washing it. Now here's all the tools we're going to need to lift the car up. We're doing this to dip the wheels, the jack stands, and our jack. I'm not gonna go over how to lift the car here because I've already gone over it in my oil change video. Now, like I said before, we're doing this to dip the wheels. So if you don't wanna dip your own wheels, you can go ahead and skip to this time right here. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to record a pretty big portion of the wheel dipping process. So instead, I'll be showing you this really well drawn diagram. So the first thing I did was lift up the car while it was in the garage. Then I took out the wheels. Since I've never done that in this channel before, I'll show you how to do it in a couple seconds. Just bear with me. After I took them out, I went ahead and took them outside so I could wash them with my pressure washer. For this, I used a special wheel cleaner and a magic eraser, as well as obviously the pressure washer. There's a pretty in-depth video on how to do it, and I'll link it in the description, as well as put it in one of the cards up here. After they were nice and clean, I took them back inside so I could put them back on the car. Then I took the whole car outside, then took off the wheels once again and brought them inside so I could spray them. So now I'll go over how to take off a wheel. If you already know how to do this, you can go ahead and skip ahead a few seconds to this time. Alright, so to take off a wheel from a car, you have to get the right size socket for your lug nuts. Most cars are either 19 or 20 millimeter sized, but you want to make sure you got the right one because if it's too big, you could strip your lug nuts and you really don't want to do that. The next step is to get a pretty large wrench to break the lug nuts loose. You can also do this by putting it in a way that you can just stand on it to break them. The important part here is to make sure that your car isn't lifted up, or at least that the wheels are still touching the ground. Because if you try to do this with the car all the way up, the wheels are just going to keep spinning and you'll never be able to break the lug nuts loose. Once you do get them loose, now you can go ahead and jack the car up so that the wheels clear the ground. Make sure that they clear the ground because if they don't, you most likely won't be able to take off the wheel. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and remove the nuts the rest of the way. And pull out the wheel. In some cases, the wheel may be stuck on, so don't be afraid to give it a nice kick. It won't hurt the car, I promise. Hey, this is me from the future. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I actually just realized that I forgot to teach you guys how to put the wheel back on. So here we go. It's pretty straightforward. You just put the wheel on and then tighten the lug nuts by hand. You can go ahead and tighten them with your ratchet just a little bit. Next, you want to put the car down on the ground and use a torque wrench to torque down each lug nut to 90 foot pounds of torque. You want to do this in a star pattern so that no one side of the wheel is tightened more than the other. So basically, you start at this lug nut, you will go next on this one, then on this one, then on this one, and then on this one. So just tighten those until the torque wrench clicks. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can also just get them super tight. The key thing here is to make sure that you're tightening them in a star pattern. Alright, I think that's everything. Back to the video. So now that we got those off, we can go ahead and bring them inside so we can mask and spray them. Now there's a couple different methods to mask your wheels. In fact, DYC has a whole kit designed just for wheels that includes like a spray that makes the dip easily removable from the tire sidewall after you're done. The kit itself uses spray cans instead of the gun that I'll be using today. So if you have that, this video will still be helpful for you, but there's also a couple videos that I think you should watch before you go ahead and spray them. In my case, I just use the gun. And for the masking, I use some note cards. Now the method I use is wedging the note cards in between the edge of the wheel and the tire sidewall. It's not the end of the world if we get some product on the tires, but this will cover most of it. And don't forget to mask the valve stem. You can just do this with a piece of tape. Make sure you get it really nice around. Again, it's not the end of the world if you get some dip on it, but it's just nice to mask it. Now that they're all masked, we can go ahead and wipe them with a pre-dip spray. 
What the pre-dip spray does is that it removes any sort of grease and any sort of debris from the wheel. The reason why we want to do this after we're done masking is so that we can remove any sort of oils from our hands that are left behind. And you want to be extra thorough with this. I'll actually go over the wheel twice before dipping. You can see some note cards fell here. And this will come back to bite me later in the future. Now I'm going to go ahead and let that pre-dip spray evaporate and we'll go over the gun for a second. So if you go ahead and open it up, you'll notice that it's all disassembled like this. Don't worry. The first step is just to take this little plastic hose and you can just attach it to the hole that is towards the handle. I struggled a little bit with this part, but it's not that hard. You also want to make sure that it's tilted forward. That way when you lean the gun down to spray at your hood or the back of your car, it's still sucking up the product. If you're wondering what the hole towards the front of the gun is, that's the breather hole. You want to make sure that that's clear because that's where the gun draws the air from. And there's also a paper gasket. You just want to make sure that that's in place before you spray. So now I'm going to go ahead and break this plastic dip open. I'm going to use a crowbar. It's going to be a little hard, but eventually you'll get it open. Now that it's open, you can notice that there's some sort of like oily liquid sitting on top of the dip itself. And for this reason, we're going to want to mix it before we even pour it in. So I'm going to use my drill as well as this little drill attachment that comes with the plastic dip kit. And Fonzie suggests that you bend these tabs a little bit so that the mixer is a little bit more efficient. If you don't have a drill, you can also just use a dipstick. Just make sure you mix it thoroughly. Alright, now that that's mixed, we can go ahead and pour it in. I suggest getting an extra set of hands to hold the filter because it can move around a lot if you're trying to pour it in by yourself. And you want to make sure you follow the instructions for the machine. That means don't overfill it, just fill it to the 32 ounce line or wherever you might need it. In my case, since I'm using this for the wheels, I'm going to fill it to the 32 ounce line. Now DYC recommends that you use one can of their wheel kit per wheel. Now these cans are about 11 ounces of product. So I'm just going to go ahead and take 11 ounces minus 32 and I'll know exactly where I need to be by the time I'm done with one wheel. So for all four, I will need about 44 ounces or just over one full cup. Now that the gun is full, we can go ahead and carefully thread it, making sure that it's nice and sealed up. You don't want to over tighten it, but you do want to make sure it's pretty tight to prevent any leakage. And we're going to want to connect the gun to the little machine that it comes with. You want to make sure that you follow the instructions for this, which say to put it outside or at least close to an opening of the place that you work in. I'm pretty sure this is what they say, but double check for yourself. So now we'll go ahead and practice spraying a little bit. You want to make sure you have a nice surface like this cardboard so you could practice on it. Or you could just spray on your walls if you don't care. Now there's a little dial right behind where you put your thumb on the gun that lets you dial in how big you want your spray fan to be. You want to make sure first that it's vertical, second that it's about 6 to 7 inches long, and third that you're spraying about 7 inches away from the surface and perfectly perpendicular to it. And when you're spraying your car, you want to make sure you're doing smooth passes with about a 50% overlap. So this is what the cardboard looks like after I sprayed it a little bit with some test sprays. As you can see in this part right here, I held it on too long and it caused the plastic dip to run. So you just want to make sure you keep on moving. You want to make sure your sprays have this nice vertical football like shape. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, you want to make sure you put on your respirator before you spray anything. This is extremely important. Even with the respirator, I found myself getting out of breath when I moved onto the car. Now we got that on, we can go ahead and start spraying. And I was actually really nervous at this point. I had never sprayed anything other than the test sprays that you guys just saw. You might be in the same boat, and there's only one thing I can tell you. At least it's removable, so you can't mess it up that bad. <laughs> now I'm just kidding. The fact that you're watching this video means that your results are going to be better than 90% of the ones out there. And if you've been preparing, then honestly I think you'll do pretty good if you try your hardest. And hey, nobody's perfect their first time. Just go ahead and give it a try. I'm sure you're going to surprise yourself with how good you'll be. So as soon as you turn the machine on, it's going to start blowing out wind. So make sure you account for that. I definitely didn't. 
and as soon as that happened, all my note cards started blowing all over the place. At first, I tried to tape some of them down, but I decided it wasn't worth it to tape every single one of them down now that I was already ready to spray. And like I said before, getting some product on your tire sidewall isn't the end of the world, so I just decided to carry on. I'm not gonna say to do exactly like how I'm doing it right here because obviously this was my first time spraying but as you can see I'm trying my hardest to be smooth and do nice even passes. The first coat, don't expect it to be black or whatever color you're dipping them. You're gonna get pretty weak coverage so don't overdo it. This is just the first coat. Just make sure you focus on being smooth with it, making sure to avoid any runs and just get familiar with the flow of the gun. That's all you gotta do. So you can see right here what I'm talking about. As you can see, it wasn't really much in terms of coverage. You can definitely see I sprayed it black, but it's not nearly what it turns out like at the end. So don't worry if yours looks somewhat like this. There's also a couple spots that I let it drip a little bit. Try not to do that, but again, don't expect it to be perfect. This is your first time spraying. This is exactly the reason why I chose to do the wheels before the car. Because I wanted to get some practice with the gun before moving on to my actual vehicle and the wheels are less visible overall. Because the next coat is going to be laid on heavier, I decided it was wise to put on the note cards with tape after all. So I went ahead and did that. And while I wait for the first coat to fully dry, I'm going to go ahead and mask the next wheel. I'm going to use the same method that I just learned how to use, which is to tuck the note cards under the wheel, then bend them to the shape of the wheel, and tape them down. Make sure they're nice and secure so they don't blow away like mine. You can see these have little gaps between them, but I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish masking this wheel, and by the time we're done, the first coat is going to be dry, we'll go ahead and do the second coat, and while we wait for that to dry, we'll mask the next wheel, then go ahead and do the third coat, and so on and so forth. So now we got this all masked up, except for this little gap right here. And as you can see, the first coat is now dry. Check out the results. Again, it doesn't look much better, but we're getting somewhere at least. Most importantly, we can go ahead and begin the second coat, which we're gonna lay on way thicker than the first one. So go ahead and turn on your gun, and you can go ahead and start spraying. This time, we're really gonna focus on those 50% overlaps, which I'm gonna go over right now. What I mean when I say 50% overlaps is that the top half of your second pass should overlap with the bottom half of your first pass. So here's an illustration so you can see what I mean. This right here would be your first pass, then this would be your second pass, and then your third pass. Hopefully it's starting to make a little sense. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do right here, as I lay on the coats thicker and thicker. And of course, the wheel surface itself is not perfectly flat, so you can spray the little nooks and crannies as you see fit. Just make sure that you're spraying smoothly and avoiding any runs. Now I'm going to go ahead and wait for this to dry and mask our third wheel. So there we go, we got our third wheel masked, and this is what that second coat looks like when it's nice and dry. As you can see, we're starting to get a bit of that nice color that we want, but it still isn't completely full coverage yet. We're gonna go ahead and do a third coat, and this one is gonna be pretty much the same as the last one, except laying it on a little bit thicker than before. Now, I'm pretty sure I went ahead and did two more coats after this. I'm not 100% sure on that though, but you shouldn't really be counting on the coats. You should be counting from the product that you use. Again, DYC recommends that you use one can or 11 ounces per wheel. And that's exactly what I used. So you just want to make sure you're around there, if not a little bit more. The reason behind this is that you want your product to have a nice, thick coverage that does not peel off unless you want it to. And once it does peel off, you want it to be a nice sheet and not peel off in little flakes. So just make sure you have 11 ounces or more per wheel and you just want to repeat this process for the next three wheels. At this point, my camera died, but while I was waiting for the coats on all the other wheels to dry, I went ahead and got a little masking on the car done, especially around the badges and the lights. As you can see, we put the wheels back on and the car is now in the garage. And here are the results. You can see a couple spots I messed up right here, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied. The wheels look just like I wanted them to. Now we can go ahead and use some bags or some paper or anything that you have on hand to go ahead and mask the wheels. 
We also want to make sure that we mask any areas such as a windshield, the engine bay, and in my case, the whole roof area because it's a convertible. You also want to make sure you get the windows, the mirrors, and like I said before, any badges and lights that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be back to show you guys how it went. All right, so we're all done masking the engine bay, the lights, the side marker lights, the windshield, and the convertible top. I also masked the side skirts with just blue tape. As you can see, I used tape and drape for all the big parts, such as the convertible top and the windows. And for the fine little detailed parts, I used this yellow tape, which is meant for crisp edges, such as these. You can see I try to do the best job possible. I try to keep it as straight as I could. You really want to try to keep it as straight as you can. You don't want this to touch the body or else the plastic tape will rip when you go to remove it. So you can see I used the yellow tape in all the areas where the parts are touching the body of the car. If you have a gap, you do not have to use the yellow tape. You can just use the regular blue tape. The plastic tape will not bridge over a gap if it's large enough. If there's an area with yellow tape that is making direct contact with the body of your car, you want to write that down because this will be what's called a peel when wet area. That means that after the last coat is done, you're going to put down the gun and you're going to peel that area. If you peel this tape when the plastic tape is dry and these parts are contacting each other, it's likely that the plastic tape is going to rip. So you really want to peel it while it's wet so it does not do that. Now I'm going to use the pre-dip spray and I'm going to wipe the entire car down twice. I'm going to go around it one time very carefully and then go around it a second time just as carefully. You want to make sure that you focus on any badging or any hard to reach areas. Just try to be as thorough as you can and especially pay attention to high touch areas like door handles, the trunk or the hood of the car. I actually messed up pretty badly in this stage because I had already masked the badge in the rear by the time I got to wiping down with the pre-dip spray. So I actually missed some spots that there was water caught in the badge and that came back to bite me later. So what I would recommend if you really want to be thorough is to wipe it once with the pre-dip spray before you mask anything, then mask and then twice after. This isn't totally necessary, not even the DYC official YouTube recommends this. But just from my experience, this is what I would do if I were to do this job again. Alright, now we're all done wiping. Now it's time. At this point, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous. But again, there's no reason really to be nervous. If you've prepared enough, it's gonna turn out great. You just give it your all. Also, I had just done the wheels, so I was getting a little bit more confident with it. Now, since we've been doing the pre-dip spray, the plastic dip has been sitting for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and mix it once again. Now that we're all done mixing, we can go ahead and turn on the machine. As you can see, I was so nervous that I even got a tape measure to make sure that I was getting the right length away from the car. Make sure you do a couple practice sprays to just get the hang of it. And then it's time to start spraying. I started spraying in this area over here because it was small enough that if I messed up I wouldn't care that much. Funnily enough, from then on this became the area that I started every single coat. So this part is just going to be pretty much just me spraying. So if you don't want to see that, you can go ahead and fast forward to this point. I am going to give some tips on how to spray so you might not want to do that. But if you're really short of time for whatever reason, you can go ahead and skip. So right here, I'm actually going in a little bit too dry. I wouldn't recommend doing these really light coats. The first coat is supposed to be light, but I would actually go maybe a little bit heavier than this. It's a lot like with the wheels. You shouldn't expect full coverage, but you still shouldn't like just drizzle it on like this because at the end, when you're done with your final coat, it will reflect a little bit. While you're spraying, you might have some problems with the hose. So I would recommend to make sure it just doesn't touch the car. Try to unfurl it as much as possible before you start dipping. That way you can just walk around freely. You can also use your free hand to guide the hose as you move so it doesn't get caught anywhere. 
Also, if there's any areas you're going to directly spray that have like the taping drape over them, make sure to secure them because the wind from the gun will push them away as what's happening here with my radiator. If you were thorough with your masking, you shouldn't have to worry too much about where you're spraying. Remember, if you get plastic up anywhere that it wasn't supposed to be, it's not the end of the world. The stuff is really easily removable. Don't let it affect your spraying. This is more like it. This form is a little bit better for the first coat. And you can see right here, I'm trying to focus as much as I can on the 50% overlaps. It's not that crucial in the first stage, but you still want to focus on it to avoid any unpainted large gaps as it will slightly show through in your final coat if there are. You can see here the garage is still slightly open. That's because you want to keep your area as well ventilated as you can. Even with a respirator, you're still gonna breathe in some of the fumes. If it's not ventilated at all, you could poison yourself. So just be careful and keep well ventilated. In addition to the space here which was blowing the air, I also had a couple fans running to ventilate even more. You want to make sure that you're not stopping at any single spot in the car's body, otherwise the dip will run. And you want to make your passes as long and smooth as possible. Try to go along the whole body panel. Try not to stop in the middle. I think we've had enough of the first coat. I'm gonna go ahead and come back when it's all dry so I can show you the results. Alright. So I waited for the first coat to dry, which by the way is what you want to do. You never want to spray when the coat before is wet. You want to wait till it's dry to the touch, which usually takes about 30 minutes. As expected, the coverage wasn't great. We still got more coats to go, and they're gonna go on a lot thicker, so then we'll get some really nice coverage. We want to mix up our dip once again, and then get ready to spray. We're gonna spray it thicker than last time. So here we go. As you can see, I'm laying it on a lot thicker than the first coat, or at least I'm trying to. You want the dip here to be like a wet sheet, that way it dries out evenly and does not leave any sort of spots at all. In this one, you really want to focus on those 50% overlaps in your passes. I'm also going to take this time to talk about the amount of product I use. Now, the DYC website has their medium size model as a Mustang, so you would have thought that I would have gone with the medium, but actually, mine is a convertible. So instead, I went with a small, which is 3 gallons of product. The reason I'm bringing this up is because you don't want to measure your product and how many coats you put down. Everyone moves around differently and everyone sprays differently, so you want to measure it in the amount of product you put down, in gallons, not the coats. So for this project, I ended up putting about 5 coats down. This might be different for you. You might have 6, 7, maybe even 8, or maybe as low as 4. This does not matter. All that matters is how much product you put down, and that you're putting it down the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse this footage so that this video doesn't drag out too long. This will be the last coat that I show the spraying for. But again, I made sure to use all three gallons and went for another three coats. After this is done, I'll show you how to use pearls, which is what makes the car look that little purple blue color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wait for that to dry. And here's the results of that second coat. As you can see, the car is starting to look a lot better than before. It is actually black now. But we still need to put down the whole amount. Even if it looks good, you still want it to be a thick layer so that when you go ahead and peel it, it peels all the way. And also, so it doesn't chip, scratch, and all that as easily. So then I went ahead and put a third coat. And this is what it looks like after the third coat is dry. And then this is what it looks like after five coats. Now we can go ahead and start with the pearls. 
So how the pearls work is that they're these little flakes almost, or I, uh, flakes is a different thing. But there is, it's this little almost like glitter like powder that you mix in with the clear gloss top coat. That's what you want to use for the pearls. So I got two gallons of the clear gloss top coat. Usually you want around 25 to 50 grams of pearls per gallon of top coat. 50 if you want the color to really stand out and 25 if you want a less flashy, I guess, appearance. In my case, I decided to go 25 for two gallons, so 50 grams in total. If I were to change one thing about how I did this project, it would be that exact thing. I would still have two gallons of top coat, but I would probably only have 25 grams of the pearls. This is because I really feel like I didn't need that much color. I would have actually liked it if a little bit of the black shone through in the daylight. So to mix it, you want to make sure that you're pouring as you're mixing. You don't want to pour it all in and then mix. This is really important so that the pearls don't clump up together. You want to keep them free floating so that they give you a nice and even finish. So don't pour it all at once, just pour as you mix. You might have also noticed that I didn't clean the paint cup. This is because it doesn't really matter if you mix in with a little bit of black, as long as that's what you intend. Since my base coats are black, then I don't mind a little bit of blending in between the base coats and the pearl coats. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in, and we're ready to spray. At this point, I was getting a little bit nervous again. Top coat is a little bit harder to spray than regular dip. This is because it's meant to be a glossier finish, so as a result, it runs a little bit easier. To combat this, you want to make sure that you're moving as smooth as possible. Do not slow down at any point, and definitely do not stay still at any point, because it will run. You want to just keep a steady pace, not too fast, because then the dip will dry up in individual droplets, but you also don't want to go super slow that it will drip. Just find a pace that you're comfortable with and stick with it. If you see it getting dry a little bit too fast, just slow down, but do not slow down mid-pass. There's one more thing I could change about this project was how fast I moved. Because I was nervous, I moved maybe a little bit too fast on my passes. And as a result, it wasn't as glossy as it could have been. But now here we go, it's time to start spraying. And wow, I was just incredibly amazed when I first started putting this down. Got me so excited to finally start seeing streaks of blue and purple on my car. It looks so amazing contrasted with the black. You can see here that I'm getting kind of a midnight purple finish, which is exactly what I first intended to get. That's why I said that I would only use 25 grams of the product if I could change this. So if you're watching this and you want a similar finish, now you know. If you want to skip this part of spraying again, you can go ahead and skip to this time, where I show the peeling process and then the results. Otherwise, you can just stay and relax as you watch this Mustang being taken over by color. Thank you. 
<clears throat> All right, I'm not gonna show the other codes just because it's a lot of the same stuff that you're gonna see in this one But just keep in mind that I did use the full two gallons that I had of top coat Now I'm gonna skip to when I finished the last coat and I was ready to peel those areas that I had marked down as peel when wet So right here the moment I put down the gun I go and run to the spots that I had marked down so I can start peeling them First I go with the headlights since they're so close to that fender. You don't have to peel off all the tape like I'm doing here, you just gotta get the edges. In fact I would recommend that you only get the edges, that way you still have time to do the other ones. Because it's so critical that you peel the areas when they're wet, I would actually recommend that you start peeling after you're done with a single side not when you're done with the whole coat. So once you finish one side, put down the gun, peel that side, then move on to the other side, finish it, put down the gun and peel that side. So that's exactly what I did here. So now I'm starting to peel this area that I marked as peel when wet. You want to take great care not to touch the area that you just sprayed. So just be careful with that. Just touch the tape. Here I'm using the tape to keep the bag away from the area that I just sprayed. I wasn't as neat as I could have been in this area and it resulted in a few spots where the tape overlapped and you will see some paint. On top of that, there was some bridging going on. I guess I waited too long. But when there is bridging and you start to see it stretch, you want to cut your tape like I did here and then you can either use your finger to try to keep the plastic tape down or you can even get a knife and cut it so that it doesn't keep tearing. 
this side got the worst of it. There was a bunch of spots that the tape was actually over the car, resulting in a bunch of spots where the product didn't go on. On top of that, there was multiple instances, as you can see right here, where the plastic had bridged over, which caused it to peel a little bit. This isn't the end of the world, but it will result in those areas having less durability than the rest of the car. As the plastic dip ages, you will see it start to peel back in those areas specifically because it is not as protected. So after you're done with all the peel when wet areas, you can go ahead and wait 30 minutes for the coat to dry and then peel the rest of the car. This is the part right here where I messed up the pre-dip spray process. Because I had already masked this badge, before I went over it with the pre-dip spray, some water was actually trapped behind the badge. And when I started spraying with the gun, the air pushed the water out from below even the tape and it started messing with the dip a little bit. It wasn't the end of the world because I got it with a towel, but it did form like a ring where there wasn't any dip around my badge. It isn't super visible, but when I point it out, it's easy to notice. And that's what you'll find with a lot of this stuff. You won't mess up super bad, but there will be some little details like that. It's alright though, nobody's perfect, and if it's your first time spraying, nobody really expects you to be. But hopefully by watching this video, you'll avoid some of those little mistakes that I made, and your car will look even better than mine. This is all for part 2 of the Plasti Dipping series. In part 3, I'll show the final results and the aftercare that is needed on your dipped car. I hope you found this video very helpful and if you're thinking about taking on your own project and you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and like the video if you did find it helpful. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want more content just like this. I try to have a blend of tutorials and entertaining videos on my channel, so if any of those things interest you, please consider joining this community. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.